don't you play I'ma spend it like I'm getting paid For so long, I can't place the time it takes to erase all this hate. This pain is ingrained in my brain. In my saying, I don't really know anymore. Whoever sees this and subscribes right now, get free blue sky. I'm not talking about crystal meth. What do you think this is? Breaking Bad? What's going on, YouTube? It's Noxil, and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today, people, it is the greatest day on planet Earth. Yes, we know it is Friday, which means we are back with the one and only ERB. Now you guys know I read the comment section, the good, the bad, the ugly, the troll. This is one of the next highest requested ones. It is none other than the battle of two of the greatest. No, they're not the greatest shows. Breaking Bad is a great show. Walking Dead is, is something. It's, it's a zombie at this point in time. But anyways, it's Walter White versus Rick Grimes. But before getting further, I want to give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. If you guys like that, yes, I'm an artist myself. There's a good chance to like my breakdowns, but I think about music. You'll probably like my music as well. I have a new album, Blacklist, charted on iTunes for the first time. If you want to support me and support the channel directly, I'll put the links to that below. Also, shout out to the Patreon and Patreon family. Exclusive reactions and content on there. Again, all links down there. But anyways, anyways, we know what we're here for. ERB, step back up to the plate. Let's see what you got. Like that piano. Stay back. This is gonna get bad. I'm about to show this lab rat how to be a real dad. Great. <laughs> how to be a real dad. You know, I feel like I need my cowboy boots on, just chewing on my dip as I'm drinking some Mountain Dew, staring off with my shotgun in the distance. Don't trespass around here, motherfucker. This is gonna get bad. I'm about to show this lab rat how to be a real dad. Alright, Carl, stay back. In the early seasons of Walking Dead, before spoiler alert, Carl uh, met his untimely. And uh, Rick was always looking out for his son. Obviously, coming out of a coma in a post-apocalyptic world, uh, all he had really was his uh, family to try to take care of and look after. But unfortunately, that didn't go so well for him. And then he's calling Walter White a lab rat because, well, he is a science teacher. He also happens to have a side job, which is cooking crystal meth. Um, I don't know how you get through a job application on that one, but that's something we can talk about another day. Stay back. This is gonna get bad. I'm about to show this lab rat how to be a real dad. A great AMC. We're moving your A one day. A great AMC? AMC? The channel which had The Walking Dead and also Breaking Bad. A great AM. That is amazing. Great A wordplay right there. And obviously MC, Master of Ceremony. And I do like the dad trolling because... You know, the, the biggest critique is Breaking Bad is you watch breaking apart and turning someone bad who originally we thought was a morally good person. And then, you know, he gets so caught up in the drugs and in that life and in trying to pay for cancer treatments and he justified for his family when ironically all of his actions and his lies push him further and further away from his family, especially his wife and his son. Slab rat, how to be a real dad. Great AMC, we're moving your A1 day. Oh, and then that, wow, there's so much packed into this, isn't there? A1, have an A1 day, right? The car wash that Walter originally worked at for side hustle to try to make extra money, he then ends up buying and using it as a front to wash his money. Get the wordplay there. But then the slogan there is have an A1 day. He owned the A1 car wash. Also, I don't know why I'm thinking of a1 steak, but we got beef in this bitch. Slab rat, how to be a real dad. Great AMC, we're moving your A1 day. Cause Sheriff Grimes rhymes dirty like my armpit stay. <laughs> I'm a post-apocalyptic cop who's got a lot of issues. Pop a cap in you and splatter the brain you miss you. It's got a lot of issues. I love like even there when he's opening up about some stuff, isn't he? He's going through a lot trying to be a cop in a post-apocalyptic world. Like he just... He's so kind of got that drawl and that just slower, laid back type of vibe in nature. I love the caricature that Peter is playing right now. The cop who's got a lot of issues. Pop a cap in you and splatter the brain you miss you. Mm. Cooking up blue sky and bigger lies for Skyler. Hatching little schemes like a dying MacGyver. You tore <laughs> like a diving MacGyver. Yeah, Walter White is kind of like MacGyver the way that he gets out of situations. I remember when he... Escaped from Tuco's that one time, and he just, you know, created basically an explosive that he threw on the floor, and he's always just finding ways to just escape death by the hairs, in a sense. And then Blue Sky, he was known for his blue crystal meth that he would cook up, 
hatching lies for Skylar. Skylar, his wife, he continued to lie to her about what he was doing. And then I think there was, again, there's so many bars packed into this. I don't want to pause as much as I am, but it's forcing me to because of how much they just pack into it. Sky and bigger lies for Skylar. Hatching little schemes like a dying MacGyver. You tore your family apart, sin by sin. Where I live, it happens literally limb for limb. So Ooh. write this down in your... Ooh. Ooh. I mean, yeah. You know, he kind of chose that life. Uh, oh, Rick didn't really chose his life. He's just trying to survive and not get his brains eaten out by a zombie. Sin by sin, where I live, it happens literally limb for limb. So write this down in your pancakes so you won't forget it. I kill zombies that are better men than you before breakfast. I don't... Whoa. I do like that line. Again, the biggest character flaw that we can attack is just, you know, the lies what he tells his family, what he tells himself, just the gradual degradation of Walter White. And uh, I think it's a great study into human psychology and societal issues and making us all kind of go, you know, what if? What if we were put in this situation, this opportunity was presented to us? Would we act how we think we would act? Or maybe we'd be surprised. You know, you just, you never know with people, do you? All right, well, that was creepy, so uh, let's keep this rolling. Also, zombies in the back of the mix. So he's saying, you know, these dead motherfuckers who, uh, you know, just have trouble walking, basically are uh, better human beings, and they're not even human anymore, than you are. What's that do for you? Hey, so you won't forget it. I kill zombies that are better men than you before breakfast. I don't know what you think I've done, but if we were to battle, I've already won. Ask I don't know. What you think I've done? But if we were to battle, I love that little do 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 do. Nice style of delivery and rhythm from Lloyd and mimicking and quoting from Breaking Bad itself. I don't know what you think I've done. That was when uh his brother-in-law was confronting him, wasn't it? Because his brother-in-law is a DEA agent. Like, are you dealing meth? And he's like, I don't know what you think I've done. And there he is in front of his uh epic trailer where they would drive off him and Jesse to go cook up some meth for the day. No, what you think I've done? But if we were to battle, I've already won. Oh, that's when he uh well, puts on the hat and he turns into his alter ego, doesn't he? Ask Gus, you don't want to face off against me. I'll stuff you in a barrel and make it too smooth. Oh. Oh, poor Gus. Gus had half of his face blown off. Get it? You don't want to face off like in a battle, but also just ask Gus, who we used to work with, and then they were like frenemies, weren't they? They were friends, enemies. No, they, they were never really friends. They were just business associates, in essence. But uh, yeah, it didn't end so well for good old Gus. It's not going to end well for Rick if Walter is coming through dropping hammers like this. Gonna face off against me. I'll stuff you in a barrel and make it too smooth. <sighs> Because we have to get rid of the body and the bones, so why not put it in a vat of acid and let it just get broken down and let chemistry do its thing? Wanna face off against me? I'll stuff you in a barrel and make it too smooth. Your sense of duty gets your group into some deep duty. Always getting saved by some samurai booty. I'm a kingpin. Oh, that one hurts me. Your sense of duty, because, you know, again, he's in an apocalyptic world, and the biggest critique on Rick is that he's still living like the apocalypse didn't happen and that zombies aren't around and that, you know, we still have laws and people operate by normal moral codes instead of just doing whatever it takes to survive. And it does lead to quite a few deaths from his group. And yeah, that's the uh, biggest critique of him. Also in a lot of situations, uh, Michonne, badass samurai chick has to often come in and save the day. So that is true. That's nice. I like how Rick is critiquing Walter's morality. So Walter says, well, you know, you want to sit on your high horse, but it really isn't helping you survive in your world, is it? That's a nice way of taking like sort of a meta argument and one of like the main points that's being used against him in the battle and flipping it and reversing it back on a Ricky Rick. We just need Morty now and we're ready to rock. It's your group with just some deep duty. Always getting saved by some samurai booty. I'm a kingpin. Cooking crystal in the middle of the day. Having dinner by the pool with the DEA. <laughs> over with my Aztec. PTA. If you ever try to stop Heisenberg getting paid. <laughs> I mean, this is very much 
his alter ego, Heisenberg, the drug kingpin, eating with the DEA. That's his brother-in-law who we talked about, worked with the DNA while he's out, you know, driving in the desert around with Jesse, cooking up that good old crystal meth. Everybody. My Aztec PTA. In no way am I trying to promote crystal meth. Let's not get that twisted. Don't confuse humor with that. Why do I even have to say this? This is entertainment, people. Come on. And then GTA. We all know in GTA, if you've never done it, and you just don't know how to f have fun in life anymore, just drive over a bunch of people. Don't do that in real life, though. But he did it in real life when he saved Jesse, ran over some dudes, didn't he? You're by the pool with the DEA. Were you over with my Aztec PTA? If you ever try to stop Heisenberg getting paid, here's a hot dose. Let me watch you choke on the truth. You look up to me like I'm a pizza on the road. You're a loser. I really love how both of them have really just gone into character. Like, obviously, they always go into character, but there's times when they just do such a good job, like with the voices, with the pantomimes, and just how they carry themselves. Peter's done a great job, and I'm a huge fan of the way that Lloyd is doing this right now. And then the pizza on the roof, like having an outburst. You see him having an outburst, and it reminds us of the infamous pizza on the roof scene when he just takes a pizza and chucks it up onto the roof after having an argument with Skyler. And then there's one that just goes super deep, and I'm just I'm I'm worried how naughty this is. If you ever try to stop Heisenberg getting paid, here's a hot dose. Let me. Heisenberg getting paid. You see how the drums right there and the percussive kicks just highlighted the rhythm that of Lloyd's delivery. Nice little touch on the percussion there. Hot dose. Let me watch you choke on the truth. Having like a hot dose of drugs, but here's like a hot dose, like the hot gossip for the day. But I think that goes deeper because he literally watched someone choke on her vomit and die. I'm talking about Jesse's girlfriend when they were high on um, heroin and he snuck into the room and he's trying to wake up Jesse. She rolls over onto her back after being on her side, which she would have been fine. He watches her throw up, and then he doesn't do anything to stop her. Yeah, that's uh, it's kind of messed up, isn't it? Yeah. T.A. If you ever try to stop Heisenberg getting paid, here's a hot dose. Let me watch you choke on the truth. You look up to me like I'm a pizza on the road. you're a loser. A failure to your whole entire crew. I've seen Walter Jr. handle walkers better than you. Oh, 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 oh. oh, wow. That, uh, that hurts my soul, that one. Walter Jr. has cerebral palsy. Walter Jr. has to have a walker to get around on, but he's playing off of what they call zombies. They call them walkers in the walking dead. So, zombies, walking. Wa That's a great flip. That's so that that might be my favorite line in bar right there. To your whole entire crew. I've seen Walter Jr. handle walkers better than you. Nice, nice. I really do like that one. Yeah, we're just we're we're questioning your ability to really do anything and survive at this moment in time. I said stay back with the others <laughs> while I finish this bitch like you finish your mother. You ain't the danger. Oh, Carl did have to kill his mother. Ugh. Stay back with the others while I finish this bitch like you finish your mother. You ain't the danger to me, Walt, so knock all you want. I'll watch you get eaten on my fucking front lawn. Your monsters don't. You ain't the danger to me, so knock all you want. That's the infamous when he's talking to Skylar, and Skylar's like, you know, let's go to the cops after she knows what he's doing. Like, you know, you're you're in danger. And then Walt just like goes full alter ego on her and just really comes out and is like, like, he's not the one in danger. You know, he's not the one getting shot up at the door. He's the one who's knocking on your door. Big OG gangster moment from Walt. So that's the knock scheme. And I like how Rick takes that and flips it and goes, hang on, hang on a second. I don't really care if you're the big bad guy. You just stay outside and we'll just... Wait for your brains to get chewed up. So knock all you want. I'll watch you get eaten on my fucking front lawn. Your monsters don't frighten me. And you can bite me. I'll be standing right. Did he just like tease the zombie away with some of his blue magic? My I think he did. Front lawn. Your monsters don't frighten me. And you can bite me. I'll <laughs> and you can bite me. Get it? Like the zombie. He turns the zombie. You can bite me. But actually, you don't want to get bit and turned into a zombie yourself. But... Your monsters, your zombies, but also like you trying to be a monster on the microphone. A lot of really clever double writings here. Get eaten on my fucking front lawn. Your monsters don't frighten me. And you can bite me. I'll be standing right here in my tidy Walter Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> Not him and his tidy Walter 
Whitey's like when he, because when he's cooking up at first, especially in the first couple seasons, he doesn't want to come back home smelling like it all. So he literally strips down and just gets the job done in his old tidy whiteys, baby. Nothing like him. Shout out to Haynes. Miracles. Right, and you can bite me. I'll be standing right here in my tidy Walter Whitey. <gasps> oh, is he coughing up right there? I think so. I thought he was like a zombie for a second, like trying to eat himself. But no, that's him. Because obviously, you know, he's got cancer, lung cancer. So that's what he's, I mean, the, the whole premise of Breaking Bad. I, I don't know why I'm doing this because you guys are probably watching because you've seen Breaking Bad and we've been talking like you have, is that, you know, he basically gets diagnosed with cancer. He's a science teacher can't really afford it and then he starts to deal drugs on the side because he's worried about taking care of his family and providing for them when he's gone and then everything just kind of spirals out of control from there doesn't it and you can bite me i'll be standing right here in my tidy walter whitey i'll bury you faster than your partner stole your whole life no one saw shane coming except for your wife that was ruthless that was just the the total destruction of a fellow human being. Oh man, Shane, who was supposed to be his partner in the force. Obviously, when uh, good old Rick was out of commission, Shane left him, went and hooked up with his wife. How's that for being a good partner, looking out for you? And then obviously Shane tries to kill him later on. So no one saw Shane coming, like the character of Shane. But uh, also, like, saw Shane coming, except for your wife. Get it? C-U-M. Yeah, coming like that. It's not ERB if we don't have some type of dickage thrown around, is it? My tiny Walter Whitey! I'll bury you faster than your partner stole your whole life! No one saw Shane coming, except for your wife! Uh -huh. oh, yeah. It hurts worse the second time around. <laughs> did, uh, did the announcer get eaten by a zombie and then rise back up as one? I think so. I love that guitar. Very just epic moments and like some grungier, grittier guitar moments too. It's good soundtrack and production on this one. Oh wow, we just went full screen. I don't know what that does for your day. How's that? Wow. So um, as much as I did enjoy the role play of Rick Grimes, I mean, we obviously have to give the ruthlessness to walter white and shout out to lloyd for my opinion this is up there with some of his other great roles that he's played in erb this was this was a really good one in terms of how he carried himself his delivery everything man that was that was on point for me that was fun erb you were knoxville certified so if you guys like today's video as always be sure to smash that like button listen if you're here at the end obviously enjoy the content do me a favor support the channel directly subscribe with notifications on have a great weekend guys i love you it's march madness that's all i'm gonna go do catch you again soon I'm out.